Hello everyone, welcome to YSHIS YouTube channel and welcome to the series of Art and Culture. Before getting into the video, if you have not yet subscribed to YSHIS channel, do subscribe. And for the series and other details, you can contact YSIR at WhatsApp 7200681675. So already YSIR has uh, posted a video regarding the uh, test series of 2022. So if you have not yet watched it, please do check out on the playlist. And if you want to enroll to YSIS test series, do contact YSIR. So let's get started. In the previous video, we have discussed about the regional school of painting. So regional school of painting can be classified into two types. They are Rajasthani school of painting and Pahari school of painting. So in the last video itself, we have dealt with the Rajasthani school of painting. So under Rajasthani school of painting, there emerge some sub genres of Rajasthani paintings. They are uh, Mewar school of painting, Ambar Jaipur school of painting and Marwar school of painting. So in this video, we will be discussing regarding Ambar Jaipur school of painting. See the rulers of Ambar were uh, closely associated with the Mughals. So it is known that uh, they, they were major patrons and avid collector of painting. But uh, the Ambar school is not as well etched in our minds as that of uh, other schools. So Ambar school is also called as Dandar school and their earliest evidence come from the wall paintings at Bairat in uh, Rajasthan. So some of the Ambar school of painting can also be found in uh, palace walls and mausoleum of Amar palace in Rajasthan. So some of the men folk are uh, shown wearing Mughal style clothing and headgear and the overall finish of the painting is folk styled. So the Ambar school reached its uh, zenith in the period of uh, Savai Pradap Singh in the 18th century. See the Savai Pradap Singh is uh, a deeply religious man and a passionate uh, patron of art. So the uh, two strains combined uh, to ensure that uh, Savai Pradap Singh's uh, Surakana or the Department of Painting made uh, miniatures to illustrate Bahavata Purana, Ramayana and uh, Ragamala and Rahamala and other several portraits. Now let's see about Marwar School of Painting. See this Marwar School of Painting is the most extensive school of uh, painting that includes uh, Jodhpur and Bikaner. So both Jodhpur and Bikaner were ruled by the Rathods and Jai Shalmar that was ruled by the Bhattas. So like Bikaner, Jodhpur is also a desert kingdom that was prospered through its close link with the Mughals. So the in, uh, painting produced uh, during the time of 15th and 16th century, the men and women wore beautiful colorful clothing. So in this period, they followed the Mughal patterns uh, and after the 18th century, the Rajput uh, element became the dominant one. For example, there was an influx of painting that contained a linear rhythm coupled with bright colors. In uh, the Jodhpur Atelier, uh, there has many brilliant paintings, but extraordinary focus on painting was given only on the time of uh, Man Singh, who is the ruler of Marwar. So Man Singh commissioned an extensive series of painting including the Shiva Purana, Nata Charitra, Durga Charitra and Panch Tantra. The three, the two uh, dominant or uh, prominent school that come under the Marwar school were Kishangar school and Bandi school. Now let's see about Kishangar school of painting uh, from 18 to 9, uh, 17th to 18th century. See the painting at Kishangar is associated with the most romantic legend Savan Singh and his beloved Bani Thani and intervening of lives and myths, romance and bhakti. And Nihal Chand uh, is uh, the painter who created most of the legendary painting under uh, Kishanar school. See in this Kishangar school, uh, Nihal, Khan, uh, Nihal Chand is a painter who also painted the uh, Bani Thani's uh, picture. So you can have uh, a look on Bani Thani uh, picture which was painted by Nihal Chand. See this Bani Thani is the uh, beloved uh, person of uh, uh, Sa Savan Singh, this Bani Thani, she has a distinct profile and has a elongated lotus like uh, eyes uh, and thin lips and a pointed chin. Her odni or this headwear 
defines her side profile and this became uh, the unique painting associated with the Kishangar uh, school. So they also made many paintings on the devotional and amorous relationship uh, between uh, Radha and Krishna. Now let's see about Bandi school of painting from 17th to 19th century. So the twin kingdom of Bandi and Kota are collectively known as Hadoti. So these are the regions from Rajasthan. So Bandi and Kota king are the devotees of uh, Krishna. So the Krishna Bhak plays an important role in uh, their painting and perhaps painting play an Im uh, important role in their Krishna Bhakti. So in Bandi school painting, the local vegetations were in detail and the human faces were uh, round with pointed nose and color of sky is uh, painted differently. Mostly a uh, red ribbon is visible in the sky. So you can have a look on Bandi school of painting. Now let's see the difference between the Rajput style of painting and Mughal style of painting. So based on the types, the Rajput style is based on uh, mural and fresco forms and later they were uh, dominated by the miniature painting. Uh, coming to the point of Mughal style, it is uh, uh, based on the Persian miniature painting style. So based on themes, Rajput style is differentiated as it usually it is usually devotional or religious in nature where Mughal style it depicts the Mughal emperor and his household and uh, the battle and hunting scenes were very much popular in Mughal style of uh, painting. So in peculiarity, uh, the it uh, Rajput gives uh, uh, an importance to the Hindu uh, symbols like the lotus peacock and swam whereas in uh, Muhal they focuses either on the person in the picture or uh, on trees ca and camels and falcons. So falcons are the bats. So time period you can say that time period the Rajput is of uh, from 17th to 18th uh, this period is the major uh, uh, period of uh, Rajput style of painting. And uh, in uh, Mughal style, it is from uh, 16th to 18th century. So 16th to 18th century is the important period of painting that developed to do, uh, in the Mughal period. Now let's see about Pahari school of painting from uh, 17th to 19th century. See, uh, Pahari school of painting developed in the sub-Himalayan states also under the influence of Mughals. So there were many schools that flourished uh, in the smaller kingdoms that also comes under the Pahari uh, school of painting. So these consisted ateliers in the court of around 22 princely states uh, stretching from Jammu to Almora. Almora is in Uttarakhand. So the Pah uh, Pahari school of painting can be uh, classified or divided into two groups. They are Basoli school and Kangra school. So the themes that were painted uh, ranged from the mythology to the literature and new techniques were brought uh, in front. So each figure in Pahari school of painting has different composition, color and uh, pigmentation. So the two greatest painter of uh, Pahari school were Nainsuk and Maku, Manaku. Now let's see about Basoli school of painting from 15, 17th century. This painting, uh, the painting which was created in the Pahari school in the 17th century comes under the Basoli school of painting. So this was the early phase and Basoli school of painting can be characterized by the expressive faces with the residing hairlines and big eyes that are shaped like the lotus petals. So in Basoli school of painting, uh, they used lots of primary colors like uh, red, yellow and green. And they also used the Mughal technique of painting on clothing but uh, developed their own style in it. So the first patron of uh, the Basoli school of painting was Raja Kirpal Singh who ordered the illustration of Banu Dattas, Rasamajari, Gita Govinda and uh, Ramayana drawings. So the most famous painter of uh, Basoli school of painting was Devi Das who was famous for his depiction of Radha Krishna and the portrait of a king in their livery and in white garments. So the use of contrast color uh, in the Basoli school of painting is associated or it is borrowed from the Malwa painting. 
so you can have a look on basoli school of painting yeah we'll have a look on kangra school of painting which is from mid 18th century onwards so after the decline of mughal empire many artists uh, who were trained in mughal style migrated to the kangra region of uh, himachal pradesh as they got patronage by the uh, rajput kingdom so it is i uh, led to the birth of gullar kangra uh, school of painting so the uh, it is called as gullar uh, kangra school of painting as uh, this a uh, type of painting was first evolved in the region called gullar then it was uh, transfer or uh, migrated to kangra so this school reached its zenith under the patronage of raja sansar chand so his painting were marked with the sensuality and intelligence that the other schools lacks so you can have a look on kangra's painting so the popular subject were the geeta govinda bahavat bahavata purana satsai of biharilal and nal dayanti these are the famous or the popular subject of uh, kangra school of painting so love scenes of krishna was very prominent theme and all the painting had an worthy worldly feel about them so another very famous group of painting is the 12 month where the artist try to bring the uh, bring forth the effect of uh, 12 months on the emotion of uh, human being so this emotive style was popular till 19th century and the kangra school became the parent school to the other artilleries which developed in the region of kullu champa and mandi so in kangra sanshar chand museum can be visited to see the prominent uh, kangra school of uh, painting now let's see about ragamala paintings see ragamala paintings are the series of illustrative paintings from medieval india based on ragamala or the garland of ragas depicting various indian musical ragas so they stand as a classical example of amalgamation of art poetry and classical music in medieval india so the ragamala painting was created in most of the indian school of painting starting from 16th to 17th century and uh, now today they are named accordingly as pahari ragamala rajasthan or rajput ragamala deccan ragamala and mughal ragamala so in all these ragamala each raga is personified by a color describing the story of hero and a heroine so the hero and heroine can be known as nayaka and nayika in a particular mood so it also elucidates the uh, season and the time of day and night in which a particular raga is to be sung so many paintings also demarcate the specific hindu deities attached with the da- raga like bhairava or bhairavi to shiva sri to devi etc so the six principal ragas present in ragamala are bhairava deepak sri malkaush megha and hindola so with this we have come to the end of today's session i hope you have liked the video so as i said earlier if you have uh, not yet watched the video regarding the vaish ist series uh, please do check out on the playlist and if you want to enroll do contact vaish sir and this video is the part of uh, paid course of aisha is youtube channel but if response is good here we'll consider uh, putting it here fully so for that you have to like share and subscribe to aisha is channel and leave your feedback on comment section so thank you take care